Welcome to the Planning Board meeting for Tuesday, April 13th, 2021. As a preliminary matter, this is John Regan, Chair of the Auburn Planning Board. Permit me to confirm that all members and person anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Todd Corain. Aye. Steve Chambers. Nicholas Lynch. Here. Ron Brooks. Aye. Town officials and employees participating, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Staff Assistant Rachel Pressey. I'm here, John. Town Planner Adam Menard. Here. Good evening. This open meeting of the Town of Auburn Planning Board of Tuesday, April 13, 2021 is now called to order at 7 p.m. This meeting is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public hearings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting on the town's website allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the planning board is convenient by, convening by remote participation for the public only. Although some members of the planning board are physically located in the selectmen's room in town hall, those members and employees are practicing social distancing in accordance with the governor's orders. For the public to join the meeting remotely by telephone, call 1-312-757-3121 and enter access code 133-747-477. Where the public can join via computer at the gotomeeting.com backslash join backslash 133747477. The remote access information has been posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded by the Auburn Cablevision. According, accordingly, those members of the planning board, employees, and members of the public who participate, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, and please take care not to share your screen. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided to the members of the body are available on the town's website. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. Meaning business ground rules. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before I do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, Chair of the Board, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the Chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. Up first on our agenda tonight is applicant Aaron M. Sherman hey, requesting site plan approval with waivers under 3.2.3.1.1 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaw for a home daycare at 2 Homestead Avenue, Auburn Mass, Map 24, Parcel 197. May I have a motion to open the hearing? John, I'll, make I'll make that motion. May I have a second? I'll second it. Is there anyone here representing the uh, daycare or proposed daycare center? John, roll call vote. Oh yeah, roll call vote. 
Um, all those um, in favor of opening the me. hearing? Ron Brooks? Aye. Nick Lynch? Aye. Todd Corain? Steve Sato? Aye. Steve Sato? Steve Chambers? Aye. It is a vote. Is there anyone here uh, representing this uh, proposed home daycare center? Yes. Please identify yourself. Uh, I'm here. Please identify yourself and your address. Uh, I'm Erin Sherman. I'm the one that, that wants the home daycare over at for Two Homestead L. Is your name Aaron Sherman? Yes. So do you have anything to present before the board verbally as we've all read the, uh, the plan for the property use and the uh, application for waivers? Yep. Um, well, I just wanted to say that since COVID and the pandemic came and people like home daycares and daycares in general are just functioning at half capacity, which makes it harder for people in the area to find care for their children. So I thought that by doing a home daycare, I could help out the community. Okay. And your plan is to have four to five children at the maximum? Yes. And your hours of operation are 6.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., if I'm not mistaken? Yes, that would be right. And 2.30 to 5.30 for typical pickup times? Yeah. And 6.30 to 8.30 for drop-offs? Yep. Is there, and you have to go through the state, the Department of Early Childhood Education to get approved and licensed and all that? Yes. Correct? Yes, I, yes. So. I did fill out an application as well. Okay, well, let me ask you this. So do you have to get approved by the town first before they'll give you a license? Or do you get your license first? Yes. You to get approved by the town. Right. Right now they can't really do licensing because they can't do home visits due to COVID. So this would be done first regardless. Okay. The application process is on hold. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Aaron? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, going down the... Uh, the board, Ron, do you have any uh, questions or comments? Aaron, I just want to ask you, when you come off Oxford Street and you yeah. head up, you head up Homestead Ave, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's you're on the section before Bryn Mawr Ave, right? Um, I'm on the corner of like Oxford and Homestead. It's, it's one house in, Ron. It's, it's, on on it's one house in. It's the big duplex. It's the one on the right, if you're facing the building. Oh, the big house on the right. Okay. Yeah, it's All right. The one, that one right there. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else on the board have a comment? Uh, Steve? No, no comments. Todd? No questions or comments. Nick? Um, no, not at this time. Okay, could I have a motion to close the public hearing? Public comment. Oh, is there anybody from the public for comment? My mistake. Yes. Please identify yourself by name and your address. Um, Yep, Christina Deshaies, 5 Homestead Ave, across the street from the duplex. I didn't catch your name. Last name is Deshaies.
Shays. And your first name? Christina, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. Okay. You're just coming through a little garbled, that's all. That's why I apologize for having to re-ask you, but. That's, that's, that's okay. Uh, please, please go ahead. There's already five children in the house, the other duplex that's adjacent to the one that she's in. And she, I believe she has two children, so that's already seven children running around. And now we're gonna add more children over there, screaming. And they're gonna be probably turning around in my driveway because there's not much of a driveway on either. It's a narrow road and we're gonna hear screaming all day long, probably. There's only five children at, what is it, two homes that have the opposite duplex. And I believe she has two children of her own, or maybe, I'm not sure, maybe it's three. I don't know. So your concern is traffic? Traffic and noise level. It's already, kids are already in the street playing. And it, they're probably going to be turning around in my driveway. How is that going to be prevented? Because my driveway is right where their driveways are. And where are the kids going to be playing? Or where is she taking care of these kids? Are they going to be in the back of the yard? Because they're all in the front of the yard right now. I, I believe the requirement is they have to... They're, always, they're, all, they're playing, all, all of them are in the road sometimes. May I speak? But I understand your concerns, but I believe in order to be licensed, they have to be in a fenced-in area behind the house. Oh, Aaron. Okay, I, and how's the noise level going to be? Pardon me? Is it okay to be screaming? It's a narrow road, okay. and they're going to be, how are they going to not drive in my driveway? The kids are already going in my driveway. I'm sorry, may I speak? Go, go ahead, Aaron. Um, I already paid a couple thousand dollars to have my backyard fenced in. And currently, my children do not play in the streets. My son may ride his bike. He's nine. But other than that, he's not playing in the street. And my daughter is 16. So she does not play anywhere in the yard, in the street, anywhere nearby. And the children that in my child care will be playing only in the backyard, which will be fenced in. It's already fenced in. What about the traffic? Um, and, my, and then pull into my driveway because the kids have already been in my driveway and I've had to say, please do not go in my driveway. In regards to the traffic, um, it will be probably four, maybe five extra cars a day. And if I have parents who have more than one child in my care, it may just be up to two cars extra. And I do have room for extra people in my driveway. Could you make that a uh, condition, Aaron, if, if this is granted that everyone has to turn around and turn around in your driveway or park at the end of your driveway to offload the children and yeah. then leave? So, I mean, to make it easy, I can make that. if they all entered from Oxford. I can make that can I finish, well. please? To make it easy, if they entered from Oxford Street, the house, the passenger side of the cars on the proper side of the road, and they would exit down to Bryn Mawr Ave. If you, if you could make that a condition for people to arrive with the children, I think that may help offset your neighbor's concerns. That with the parents as well during the intake process, if need be, so that they understand that is how it works. Oh, 
I oppose it. I still oppose it. No matter. I, I just oppose it. I think it's going to be too much. The streets too narrow. It's going to be. It's going to be. I oppose it. There's too much. Too much already. So. And if she violates that, how do I? Uh, you know, if you approve this, and she violates those conditions. With the recourse, because you guys can say anything, and then we we have nothing. So whatever. If she violates the conditions that we may put on this application, just call the town. And and you'll do nothing, probably. So. Well, I mean, with that kind of attitude, I hate to be frank here. If that kind of attitude is going to be the way you're going to be, why would anybody help you in the first place? We're trying to make everybody happy, which is a very difficult thing to do. You must understand that. Everybody here on the board is a volunteer. We do not get paid. We put our time and effort in on our own time to take a look at these things and try to make everybody happy in a neighborhood. It's next to impossible. But if you're going to give me attitude and tell me the town's going to do nothing, you have no idea what the town's going to do. That's out of line. And I. I I it's right out of line you know, we because we policy. had a town meeting about the house over there and you guys didn't do anything anyway, so I'm out. I'm all done with this conversation. Thank you. Good night. Have a good evening. <laughs> Moving right John, along. John, this is Nick. I do have a quick question. Go ahead, Nick. Um, during the winter time, uh, my, my sons both have gone to home, in-home daycare, so um, I, I've you know seen them work very well. Uh, and I was just curious: is during the winter time, do you have adequate um, uh, place to put snow in the event so that you don't have cars backing up and parking on the sides of Homestead? Uh, because to the to the um, your neighbor's point, it is relatively narrow over there. I grew up right on Berlin Street, so I'm fairly familiar with the area as well. And I just wanted to make sure that you had adequate place to put snow during the winter time. Um, yeah, I usually when I shovel my driveway, I put the snow like in between my adjoining neighbor's yard and my their yard, like in between our driveways. And usually, like, even to make room for the trash, so the trash isn't in the road, I usually shovel part of the road, too, as well, and put it in the same area. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody else from the board have a question? John. Go ahead, Ron. It's Ronnie. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if we have to vote tonight. I think I'd like to just go by and take a look at the exact situation. That's fair. Um, is there any other request, Ron, that you may have or anybody else on the board may have? None from me, John. Okay. I just like to look at it. Oh, I, I understand. I do have a question for you, Aaron. Is there any way, I mean, if you only have, say you have four children from four different families. Yeah. Is there any way to time the mm -hmm. cars so they're not there all at the same time? Yeah, that's why it's kind of a stag, would be a staggered drop off where it would be between 6.30 and 8.30. That way they could probably be like one dropping off at 6.30 and another probably at like 7. And usually the drop off is fairly quick for most parents. It's probably like 10 minutes. Okay. Because I do have other friends that have done home daycare as well. Well, per the request of uh, one of the board members, um, mm -hmm. I would like to continue this to our next meeting, which would be... Okay. Which would be uh, April 27th this month. Okay. And um, it, okay. is that fine with you? Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. Uh, being that, that it's a request from one of the planning board members, 
May I have a motion to continue this uh, public hearing until our next meeting at uh, April 27th, 2021? John, this is Nick, I'll make that motion. May I have a second? I'll second it, John. Uh, may I have a uh, roll call vote? All those in favor, Nick? Aye. Ron? Aye. Steve? Aye. Todd? Aye. Myself and I, it is a vote. Uh, it will be continued to our April 27th, 2021 meeting. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, have a good night. You too. Second on our agenda tonight is amendments to section one, authority and purpose to the Auburn zoning bylaw. May I have a motion to open the hearing? This is Todd, I'll make that motion. Okay, Todd made the motion, may I have a second? This is Nick, I'll second it. All those in favor, Todd. Aye. Steve. Aye. Ron. Aye. Nick. Aye. Myself, John Regan, is an aye. The uh, public hearing is now open for the amendments. John, do I quickly explain what we're trying to do? Please do, Adam. So this um, amendment is going to be, is on the warrant for the upcoming town meeting on May 4th. Um, we're proposing a couple edits to the authority and purpose section. These edits were recommended by a um, zoning bylaw review that was completed by CMRPC. Um, it might be two years already. Uh, Maybe I'm misremembering how long it's been, but they did a review of all the zoning bylaw and recommended a couple of uh, tweaks just to modernize some of the language. Uh, what's crossed out is being proposed to be removed and what's in red is proposed to be added. So again, this will be at town meeting on May 4th. So what we're looking from the planning board is a recommendation to um, recommendation to the town meeting to whether uh, approve the amendment or not approve or not recommend the amendment. Does anyone um, on the board have a question for Adam? Being none, is there anyone from the public that may have a question? May I have a uh, motion to close the public hearing? I'll make the motion, John. May I have a second? Steve, I'll second. All those in favor? Nick? Aye. Ron Brooks? Aye. Steve Chambers? Aye. Todd Corain? Aye. Myself, John Regan, is an aye. May I have a motion to recommend this? Uh, for a town meeting as a pro as a to make these corrections I'll make that motion John may I have a second this is Todd I'll second all those in favor Nicholas Lynch aye Ron Brooks aye Steve Chambers aye Todd Corain. Aye. Myself, John Regan is, is an aye. It is a vote. Moving on to the next item on the tonight's agenda. Removal of duplicate chapters, chapter, oh my God. <laughs> 14, general hazardous materials, uh, 15, earth removal, 16, earth filling, 17, stormwater management, 
and 17 stretch energy code of the Auburn zoning bylaw. May I have a, a motion to open the public hearing? Steve Chambers, I'll make that motion. May I have a second? Brent Brooks, I'll second. I'll second it, John. All those in favor? Todd Corain? Aye. Steve Chambers? Aye. Ron Brooks? Aye. Nicholas Lynch? Aye. Myself, John Regan, is an aye. It is a vote. The meeting is now open. Is there, you want to inform us through this again, Adam, please? Uh, yes, so um, you might recall this from the spring last year, we tried to pull this to town meeting last year, but COVID kind of shut it down. Um, these uh, chapters in the zoning bylaw exist in the town bylaws, and the, those chapters in the town bylaws are more up to date than what is existing in the zoning bylaw. So these zoning bylaws are essentially duplicates and they're unnecessary. Um, so this proposed article will, is kind of a housekeeping article. It will just clean up some oversights in the zoning bylaw. These chapters should have been removed when they renumbered the town bylaw, bylaws about six or seven years ago. So this is kind of an oversight and like I said, these bylaws are actually more up to date in the town bylaws, so it makes sense to stick with the town bylaws and try to update these particular ones in the zoning. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but it's mainly a housekeeping proposal. Does anyone from the board have any questions regarding this? Yes, through the chair, this is Nick. Go ahead, Nick. Just for clarification, just for clarification, um, Adam, these are, these are more meant to be in the town bylaws versus zoning bylaws, and those which are in the town bylaws are more thorough, I would imagine. Correct. Some of them are like, Thank some, you. some of them are word for word. For example, the general hazardous materials is actually word for word, but that's a fire department bylaw. It doesn't make sense for it to be in the zoning. And I'm assuming that's typical in other, um, other bylaws that you've seen from other towns? Yes. Okay, thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Anyone else from the board have any questions regarding this? Is there anyone from the public that may have a question regarding this? Being none, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? This is Steve Chambers, I'll make that motion. May I have a second? Ron Brooks, I'll second. All those in favor? Nicholas Lynch? Aye. Ron Brooks? Aye. Steve Chambers? Aye. Todd Corain? Aye. Myself, John Reed is an aye. The public hearing is now closed. May I have a motion to approve um, this item on the agenda? Recommend approval. Recommend it for approval. John, uh, yeah, this, this is Steve. I'll make a motion to recommend approval. Thank you, Steve. May I have a second? This is Todd, I'll second. Thank you, Todd. All those in favor? Nicholas Lynch? Aye. Ron Brooks? Aye. Steve Chambers? Aye. Todd Corain? Aye. Myself, John Regan, is an aye. It is a vote. Next up on the agenda today is the applicant UG786 LLC requesting site plan approval with waivers under section 9.4 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaw for a convenience store at 151 Auburn Street, map 24, parcel 498. Uh, this has been continued from our previous meeting. Is there anyone here representing um, this, this application for the uh, convenience store? Good evening, Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, it's Tracy Sharkey, GBI 14 West Street, Douglas, Mass, uh, representing the applicant. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, so we left it off. Uh, there was some debris in the drainage swale. I did reach out to the neighbor, the adjacent neighbor, uh, Joe. I believe Doreen had given a statement for him. I don't know if he's on. And um, there was a, an additional grade installed to prevent any, um, any other debris from clogging that pipe. And I think I also clarified with the um, building commissioner that once um, planning board has signed off, then the board of health as well as the building commissioner will go back out to the site to do their final inspections. Okay. Um, I do have a picture of the of the culvert. I'm not sure who installed that culvert, but it looks like it runs right underneath the child care place next door, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. I'm not sure where it is. It's probably down behind the houses down below. I know there's a constant brook down there when, it's, when, when it rains and it dries up in the dry weather for the most part. Um, I, I think the biggest concern is from your neighbor that that is maintained and kept clean. Um, that would probably be a condition that would be put upon you to uh, make sure it's clean. I don't know, check it once a week, once a month, after every rainstorm, just to make sure there isn't a flood into the neighbor's yard like, like there had been. And then, uh, of course, the town has to do the final inspection to uh, give you approval to uh, open. Is that something? The owner is agreeable to those. Okay. Um, just a um, is there anyone from the board that may have any questions or concerns regarding this application? John, it's Ronnie. I have a question. Go ahead, Ron. The picture we're looking at, which shows like, uh, a piece of screen with a board across it, and then it looks like some pieces of asphalt in front of it. That's on the convenience store property. Has that been cleaned? And I mean, it doesn't look, it looks like the screen's partially covered on the bottom left, and there's just clumps of dirt and thrown up on, on the banking and different areas, which will just wash back in. The, uh, the board has, in, in my estimation, the board has nothing to do with the screen. That's a child-proof screen that was put in during the installation of the culvert, so no kids get adventurous and crawl down a culvert and get trapped, or have animals go in there even, even more so, raccoons, skunks, whatever. Yep. That's what that's for, but it has to be maintained. Um, is this a current picture in its current condition now, or has this all been cleaned up since? Uh, Tracy. I believe that's a current pic. That's this is a current photo. Okay. Um, I know it's pretty mucky back there. Uh, I would assume the board was put there so you could get across uh, for the time being when you were trying to attempt to clean. Uh, not sure if the left side is blocked or that's water. Or, it's just difficult to see. But uh, we're going to find out Thursday night and Friday <laughs> with the inch and a half of rain we're going to get. So that would be a true test. And I don't think you'll get an inspection before yep. then. I think that may suffice. I mean, I think I might do a little better job of cleaning up and grading the edges, uh, Tracy, from the <laughs> store, just to make it a little, look a little more presentable and make sure uh, that Ron's concern is address that that bottom left side is completely open because it is a limited uh, opening in the screens. They look like maybe one or two inches in, in each direction, squares. That's pretty tight. John, I 
don't I don't know if there's what I don't think it's water I'm looking at right in front of the screen that that uh, like gray grayish area or I don't know if that's just some chunks of asphalt that are sticking in there yeah it's, it's, it's very difficult to tell from the photo it just doesn't look like it doesn't look like to me that anyone did a good job cleaning that out at all Tracy, is there anything more we can get the uh, convenience store owner to do to, like I said, make this more presentable and maybe even clean up more of the, the muck out of the bottom and kind of grade it up so it looks like a swale, so it looks like it's free and clear for the water to run? Um, I'm sure that they would be amenable to conditioning the approval. Um, I don't know if they wanted to do more work. Uh, I would have to reach out to the conservation chair also um, for maintenance of this uh, drainage. Uh, it is listed, I believe, as an intermittent stream on uh, the plan of the next door property. I believe you're correct. Uh, so that, that it was just hand removed the debris and the blockage uh, but i would be amenable to having the maintenance as we had requested and if there is additional approvals needed then um to do those approvals to get those approvals would it be a requirement it is 24 inches go ahead tracy i'm sorry it is a 20, it is a 24 inch uh, diameter pipe it's very difficult to see I didn't actually go to the site, but it's difficult to see actually what's going on right there. It is. <laughs> Myself, so. I don't know if it's a 24 inch round pipe or 24 inch square culvert, I can't tell from the photo. Judging by the screen, it looked like it might be square or the screen is laying up against the front of a round pipe. I can't, like you said, I can't tell from the photo. Without actually going up. It is a 24 concrete drain pipe. Okay. And we have no idea who installed that? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, going to be a permit somewhere, I would imagine. But, um, Adam, would they have to go through the Conservation Commission at all if they had to just go in and clean out the center of that channel? I'm not honestly sure. I, I will say um, it's probably best to keep the water flowing regardless of conservation they may need to do a, through a full cleanup it might they may need to go to conservation but i would think it would be you know not being entirely knowledgeable of it okay to just make sure that grate stays clear at the, the minimum to make sure the water does flow uh, and dpw did recommend that that condition that they maintain it um you know long term oh absolutely absolutely and conversely the other end of the culvert, if it's on the um, child care place, they need to maintain that end as well. So you don't get a back up through the pipe and create a problem from further downstream. It's not a real steep slope in there. It's pretty flat. Um, it's Ronnie. Go ahead, Ronnie. No, I just want to say if it's a 24, you know, based by the picture, it just doesn't look like a 24 inch round culvert unless it's a lot of it's covered up and if it's 24 inch round we we should have the full uh use of that 24 inch culvert to take the water through so i think they may have to go to conservation or or whatever they have to do to to make sure that the full 24 inches is available opening to go for the water to go through so if if my guess is right and those are two inch squares in the grate there's 12 inches showing uh, below the board. But I think the board is blocking part of the, the top of the pipe to show the remainder of the pipe. But that grate has to be fully open, the full 24 inch diameter of the, uh, of the pipe. I mean, I, I'm assuming the screen is probably a little larger than the pipe. And I don't know how it's attached to the pipe, but it, it should be attached somehow or staked in place so it stays there. But, um, we, we should be able to see the, the round portion of the pipe in a photo and then uh, be able to judge whether or not that's fully cleaned. I, I don't think it's fully cleaned to the bottom of that culvert or drain line, the 24 inch drain, which I, I think uh, Ron makes a good point and 
should be done prior to um, any approval to uh, open up. I mean, I, I hate to postpone you another two weeks, but uh, we put conditions on things before and they never seem to get done. And with the child care place next door, I, I don't feel comfortable uh, even asking for a vote to uh, recommend, um, which, then I'm, which I'm not going to do. I think, Tracy, we, uh, your client needs to do a little more cleanup in there, uh, make sure the grates wide open, get us a really good picture of the end of it so we'd have it for record and, and it would protect you as well and your client that it's fully open and it's fully cleaned. Do you have any objection to that? Um, I would just request the board that we condition it. Um, the pipe is entirely on the 141 Auburn Street property. Um, I did speak with Joe, maybe it's on, um, and we're working together to clean that out. I would be concerned that we may, the activity may trigger a filing for conservation, and the water is draining through right now. I mean, we can clean it up a little bit more. I think they, they didn't want to go too far. Um, to trigger any activity that would be jurisdictional. Uh, the pipe is um, the 24 inch concrete drain pipe, but it did not have a grate on it when it was installed. But that um, inlet, if you look on the plan that we submitted, is at the property line, and it was part of the development uh, for the next door neighbor. So if there's any way that we can get approval tonight um, with those conditions, um, I'm sure the town engineer would be rechecking things. Um, we want to do everything in order, but I don't know the limit of the activity that we can accomplish um, outside of an additional approval from conservation. You know, it is maintenance and debris removal. It's been like that for approximately two years. I don't believe anybody has ever maintained that. That's why it was so clogged. Um, even the owner of the pipe did not maintain it. So, and I have not located uh, the stormwater management document from that filing from the next door neighbor. So I would say there would be something in there for maintenance of keeping that inlet clean. So you don't even so know I would if we, you if know we could the grade move in. forward. We don't even know who put the grade in, correct? The, our owner, my owner did, when he cleaned it out. Okay. Because that was part of the problem. There was debris going into that inlet and there was no, there was no grate on it. I'm not sure the condition that it was in in 2016, I have a plan for 141 Auburn Street activity and use limitation plan. Um, it shows the pipe and um, so that's how we knew that it, it's solely on the adjacent property. And there was no, once it, when it was installed, there was no, no filter or grate on the end. Okay. Um, John? Yes, Ron, go ahead. I just want to say, from the picture, it, in my estimation of what I see, it does not look like a, a nice cleanup job with full exposure to the 24 inches. It is on their property. It doesn't matter what someone else didn't do before. That's why we're here, to make sure that it gets corrected in the future and it doesn't cause uh, further blockage. I think it really needs to be uh, pulled out and, and for us to see it before we vote on it. Because uh, after, if we approve, uh oh, the um, hold on, John, we lost audio. Something came unplugged. Apologize, we've lost audio. If you can hear me. Can everyone hear me? Nothing. That uh, plug was loose and I just 
popped off. You have to redo the it's cycling up. Okay. Uh, that tells me that we can't hear you, but you guys can probably hear me. So you can't tell me that I you can hear me. So we're waiting for our speaker to reboot. Please be patient. I apologize. Apologize, we're still waiting for it to boot up. Registering the conference. What's that? Registering the co okay. conference. Please enter your access code followed by the sound. Audio control. Please, have this conference will now be recorded. Two months, two weeks, or two days from now. Uh, we can now hear you again. Um, before we go any further, the town has gone out there and confirmed that the head wall is clear, Ron, but even they uh, asked if we can make it a condition of approval that this is maintained on a regular basis because any, any heavy rain, such as what we may get Thursday and Friday night will clog that head wall again and the, in the grate, so that would need to be cleaned on a regular basis. Um, if this goes some up, comes up for approval um, tonight, uh, Tracy, that will be one of the major conditions. Yeah, I understand, and I'm not sure. I mean, it will be a test if we do get that much rain um, Thursday, Friday. I don't know if we don't have the conditions or the approval if they would want to do any further uh, clearing, cleaning out of that area until we know if conservation is gonna require something. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. it will be a test, and it is 100% better than it was this winter. That, I mean, the before and after, there's a lot of debris that was removed that had caused that flooding. Okay. So we're good with the conditions. If, if we can get an approval tonight, then I'm sure I can get the owner to take care of it tomorrow, send pictures to the town engineer, and make sure that's cleaned out uh, adequately to the board's satisfaction before the Thursday rainstorm, if that's what we're really getting. I didn't hear that, but. If we do go for approval with this condition, Tracy, and you're gonna take a photo, whoever takes the photo, take a couple and make sure the board's not in the way because it kind of blocks the opening of the pipe to give us a real good idea of what it looks like. I mean, a 24 inch pipe really isn't that big. Yeah, I can use a tape measure and put it on the picture. Okay. Um, any other concerns or questions from members of the board? Being none, are there any questions or concerns from the public?
Being none, may I have a motion to close this public hearing? This is Nick, I'll make that motion. May I have a second? Todd, I'll second. I'll make the second. All those in favor? Todd Corain? Aye. Steve Chambers? All right. Ron Brooks? John, is this to close the hearing? This is to close the hearing. Myself, John Regan, is an aye. It is a vote. May I have a motion for approval uh, for this, this application um, with the condition that this is uh, maintained. Uh, further work will be done before opening the store. Uh, photos will be uh, sent to the uh, DPW. Uh, Elise Corey, uh, prior to the rainstorm on Thursday to make sure she's, she's good with it and that we have a scheduled maintenance, um, whether it's weekly, monthly, or after every storm, that the, um, the owner of the store must adhere to. May I have a motion to approve with that condition? I'll make that motion, John. May I have a second? Todd, I'll second. All those in favor? Todd Corain? Aye. Steve Chambers? Aye. Nicholas Lynch? Aye. Ron Brooks? Opposed. I, myself, John Regan, is an aye. It is a vote. Thank Thank you, Tracy, and good luck. But please make sure and ensure your client you gets that. Please ensure your client gets that done prior um, to the storm. <laughs> I think what needs a lot of confidence. We will, yeah. we will make that um, Did you need to make a vote for the waivers, or was that included in the approval for the site plan approval? Uh, just for the site plan. May I have a vote? to approve the waivers under section 9.4 of the zoning bylaw. We have a motion to approve. John, this is Nick. I'll make that motion to approve the waivers. May I have a second? This is Todd, I'll second. All those in favor? Steve Chambers. Aye. Todd Corain. Aye. Nicholas Lynch. Aye. Ron Brooks. Aye. Myself, John Regan is an aye. It is a vote. Now you're all set, Tracy. Thank you very much, Board. Have a great night. You're welcome. Thank you. John, you didn't call Nicholas Lynch for the closing roll call. Pardon me? Could you just um, roll call Nicholas Lynch for the closing of the hearing? Yeah, he voted. He voted aye. Aye. Um, I'm in, yeah, I'm here. Thank you. It's so difficult because the, the voices come in and out. It's wonders of modern technology or lack of wonders. Um, next on the agenda is applicant Eastland Partners Incorporated, a definitive subdivision plan for three building lots and construction of the roadway and related infrastructure improvements on the property located at 50 and 190 Washington Street, map 34, lot four, map 27, parcel 14. It's continued from our, our previous meeting. Is there anyone here representing Eastland Partners? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, Clay Williams is here for Eastland Partners. Good evening. Is there anything you'd like to uh, to say prior to us getting into our questions? And Sure. So through the chair, uh, since we last saw you two weeks ago, we have responded to VHB's initial uh, site plan and stormwater review comments. 
Um, joined with me tonight are Eve O'Connell, our engineer from Turning Point Engineering, and also Heather Montecup, our traffic engineer from GPI. So we've made some design revisions, answered some comments, and uh, I'll turn it over to Steve O'Connell to detail um, how the site has changed. Thank you, Clay. Uh, good evening, members of the board. My name is Steve O'Connell from Turning Point Engineering. As Clay indicated, we uh, made some minor plan revisions based on comments received from Graves Engineering and from the Auburn DPW, uh, all of which were generally straightforward. I think what you may notice as the biggest change to the subdivision plans is that we're no longer proposing sewer cross country through 50 Washington Street uh, due to some concerns and objections we heard. Uh, so the sewer will now collect uh, in a similar fashion by gravity within the subdivision road, uh, but then will be collected at a pump station, which will pump the sewage up towards Route 20, uh, then easterly along Route 20, and then up West Heck Drive to the nearest gravity manhole. Uh, this is the same manhole that the Patrick Mazda connected their sewage pump to as well. In addition to that change, we created uh, separate parcels to accommodate the stormwater facilities. So you'll notice that there, in addition to the lot, uh, there's also A and parcel B on the plans. And then based on conversations we had with the board members at the last meeting, uh, we are no longer showing sidewalk. Uh, we seem to have sentiment about that. Uh, support of no sidewalk, but we are proposing street trees at an expanded interval of 80 feet on center instead of your required 40 feet. Uh, so what also modified the waiver request accordingly. Uh, what I'd also like to point out, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, we, I took good notes at the last meeting and uh, regarding the comments, regarding your details, and I think you'll find I did. Uh, that the revisions to the plans include the details, uh, comments that you had uh, pointed out. I noticed. I hope you find those satisfying. Great. I appreciate it. Um, my pleasure. Thank you. So I'd also like to just say for the record, uh, I had a great conversation with uh, Captain Morin of the Auburn Fire Department. Uh, you'll see on the next plan sheet, uh, on the screen, not this one, but the next one, we provided uh, some profile information with his apparatus, uh, illustrating that it will not drag on the road in the sag curve condition, and it will also maneuver around the cul-de-sac. We expected there to not, you know, we didn't expect it to be a problem since the road exceeds you know, or it meets uh, and is an improvement upon your maximum subdivision design criteria. So in other words, we're not as steep as we're allowed to be. We meet your sag and crest uh, vertical curve requirements and we meet the cul-de-sac diameter requirements. So we expected the apparatus to move freely and be accommodated, but uh, the fire captain had asked us to illustrate it, which we have done. Uh, so then just to touch on a couple of things um, as a follow-up from the last meeting, uh, the applicant, my client, is uh, more than happy for the subdivision road to remain private. An association will be created, which will be responsible for the perpetual uh, maintenance of all aspects of the subdivision, including the sewer and pump station and the force main over to West Tech. Um, that is something that I just wanted to clarify and get on the record. And uh, Heather is with us this evening from Greenman Peterson, a traffic engineer extraordinaire, may I add. Sure. And uh, we are uh, pursuing uh, mass DOT permitting. Uh, it is underway. Uh, we have uh, good preliminary feedback uh, from mass DOT, and that process will occur separately. But we wanted to let you know that. Uh, Things are going well on that front. So uh, if you'd like to hear from Heather, 
I know at the last meeting we didn't get into much, but if you'd like to, uh, she's here and, and prepared to speak about anything. Uh, if not, that's okay too. We just, if eventually we're gonna get there, then I'd like to get there. Uh, if you don't have any concerns that, that can, she needs to speak to, uh, then that's okay too, but I'd just uh, like to maybe start to cross some stuff off the list. Oh, no, I understand. Um, that, uh, the traffic thing is, is out for review, isn't it, Adam? Correct. So we have to wait for results from that review. And we do. Yes, DHB is performing that review. Pardon me? Yep, DHB is currently performing that review. Okay. Um, so you, you just stated that there it will be an HOA, it will be uh, maintained privately, uh, the sewer, the drainage, the water, all that stuff would be. So if you had a water main break on that road, it's gonna be up to you to fix it. Yes, yep, we obviously would coordinate with the water, Auburn Water, I'm sure they would wanna be, but the, the burden of responsibility would be with the HOA. Okay. A lot of times they'll have the town fix it or the water department fix it and pay them to do it. I've seen that done before. Um, is there anyone from the public that has concerns regarding this development? Present. Uh, being none, is there anyone on the board that has questions or concerns with what we received back from- uh... John, it's, it's Ronnie. Go ahead, Ron. Ronnie, I got some questions. Proceed. Uh, they talked about the road remaining uh, private and uh, you will be m maintaining the bridge also? Yes, that's correct. Uh, yes, 100%. The type of trees that you're proposing? That's an excellent question. Uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you have a, a list of pre-approved tree species? Yeah, I think we do. Yep, so it would be from that list. If the board has a preference, uh, we'd be happy, you know, happy to uh, to accommodate the board's request. If to avoid a monoculture, you know, if you're looking for a few different species, uh, that, that, that'd be acceptable as well. Adam could possibly send that to us. Uh, the, Adam, do you have a list of the trees that uh, we can pick from? Uh, yes, we should have one somewhere. Um, couple different varieties should be good. We don't want to, I don't think we'd want just one type the whole way, a couple of couple or three different varieties should, should do it. Oh uh, yeah, wait, you know, if you propose an 80 feet on center, uh, you know, if they're bigger trees, that's great, because then they'll never crowd in together. But if they're like, those kind that come out and grow up straight, uh, like olive trees or whatever they are, and their branches just all come up straight, uh, and they don't expand very much, so it wouldn't look like much. I think uh, the 80 foot is fine, but we're gonna maybe pick which trees we wanna have in there. Yep, I agree, that sounds fine. Next question is, I just, I, did I hear you say you're gonna take a pump station, pump up onto Route 20, go east on 20, and then up West Tech Drive? Yes. That's correct. The pump station will pump it that, up that high? Yes, absolutely. The, the pumps would have to be sized, you know, based on the elevation head and the, you know, uh, losses that would occur along that length of pipe and the, uh, any bends, but yeah, this is, this is an open. And then the reason, the reason for that is because then from the top of West Tech Drive, it's all gravity oh, yeah. feed okay. right down to the sewer abatement district. Yeah, well, it's gravity to the Pinrock pump station, which is a, a very large and capable pump station. It's my, you know, based on our research and discussions with the sewer department, uh, that's your Pinrock pump station that goes right to the upper wad, to the uh, to the wastewater plant. That's the Pinrock is the one down by McDonald's, right? Yep, exactly. The uh, the motorhome uh, park over there, yeah. you know, abutting McDonald's, right? It's right near the dead end of the street. And, okay. 
Last question that I have right now is, in the length of the road, again, it's exactly what distance? It is uh, 1485, 1485. Okay, and I think we spoke before that, you know, our maximum is 800 feet. This is like almost double, uh, close to it. Yep, it's actually, and it's almost identical length of West Tech, uh, just to kind of give you some context uh, and reference. But where it's uh, going to be an HOA and a private sure. road, I don't think we can limit the length of the road because we're not maintaining it. the chair I, I believe there was some some concerns about maybe a second egress i don't know if they looked at that for that length of road or if they're just looking for the waiver still uh, we are looking for the waiver uh, as part of my conversation with the uh, fire captain uh, he gave us some very good uh, advice and one of the things that would sometimes be of a concern are you know like what side of the road are the hydrants on uh, because when you when you get a when you get a dead end road of any length, uh, not just this length, but even even an 800 foot length, um, if you've got to lay fire hose uh, across a road to attach it to a hydrant to fight a fire, uh, it, it, you know in in many respects you're blocking the access along that road. So, given the configuration of this subdivision. Um, we situated hydrants on the right side uh, so that uh, if they had to be connected to with fire uh, hoses, uh, that they would not have to cross the street uh, and block the road. That was excellent uh, advice from the captain, which we implemented. Um, and also uh, as part of the bridge maintenance, uh, if, we had to if we had to provide uh, inspections at you know like five or ten year intervals um, like what happens with DOT bridges to and provide those to the town again we're ha happy to do that as well so that the town has assurances that things are being maintained although privately but assurances that things are being maintained so if they have to go down there in emergency uh, you know there's confidence that, that they can do so safely to the chair John go ahead Ron Adam, is that correct that if it's a private road, it's not subject to the 800 foot length, maximum length? I would want to double check with uh, Bill Coyle and DPW uh, to, to confirm, I'm, but um, I, I, I'm not aware of anything that, that says otherwise. That says that, that it's subject to. to that thing. You're saying it's subject to the same, even if it's private, it's subject to the same 800 foot I, a maximum not, or not? I'm not sure. I want to, to confer with DPW on, on that. I don't, they, they asked for a waiver um, for the 800 feet. So I, I don't, I'm not, I don't have a clearance. I have to look into it. I don't want to give wrong information. If there's no stipulation on a privately owned road, how long it is, then wouldn't that make the waiver a moot point? Uh, yeah, if they, if they, if right. they can have any length of the road is, that's private. Is West Tech Drive a private road or is that public? Do we know? I have to look. Okay. For sure. It, oh. it, West it's Tech is long. public. Public. I know it's over 800 feet. Yeah. I, think, I think we need to, uh, to, to try to find that out before we... Oh, uh, well, this is gonna be continued anyway, Ron. Yeah. Uh, and to Mr. O'Connell, is it? Yes. When uh, I think Steve asked about the second egress, you know, down where your cul-de-sac is, and I think a short distance from there is, I, I thought you were talking about going up into Tuck Farm Road or something. I mean, is, did you, I, I forgot how you responded to that. Yeah, it's, it's not really a short distance to Tuck Farm Road. Unfortunately, it's probably another 14 or 1500 feet. Um, oh, all right. I, I didn't know how long it was. Yeah, it's got some topographic challenges. Um, you know, I, 
we did spend some time as a, as a team after the last meeting to look and you know unfortunately it's I just don't see a viable option for uh, a second entrance um, a second you know means of egress here due to the you know topographic conditions the wetland resource areas the New England power company easement uh, and for those reasons it's very difficult now if we were to stop the cul-de-sac at 800 feet, we would still have a long driveway to service, you know, the two lots that are proposed, which could be done under your common driveway provision of your zoning. But at the end of the day, if you're going to come off of an 800-foot road just to a just just to drive on a common driveway, um, you know, the captain agreed with me that. If the cul-de-sac was at the end closer to where an emergency was taking place, that space and that maneuverability of the cul-de-sac makes much more sense where we're proposing it, you know, than 800 feet shorter just to come down a common driveway that, you know, would essentially be acting as a road. Uh, so effectively, by having a 1,485-foot-long road, we're, you know, effectively providing a better scenario than what we would be doing with an 800 foot road just for for long site driveways to serve lots so we, we think given that criteria that, that this is in the best interest for you know overall uh you know, safety and operation uh, I would what, what is the width of both we're actually went a little bit wider than your minimum so your minimum is 24 and we've got 26. Thank you. Uh, I tend to agree to to go the extra length to put the cul-de-sac in. It'll be easy for uh, fire trucks to get in and pull up to a hydrant because there's going to be a hydrant at the end of the road. So that would make it much more sense than a 600-foot driveway to each building. I just think it would be safer for everybody the way it's designed. And if it's an HOA, I mean, it's, it's, it's their issue to maintain that road, not the towns, which, uh, as uh, Mr. O'Connell pointed out, eliminates the uh, maintenance on the bridge that would have to be done by the HOA. Is there anyone else on the board that may have a question or a concern? Uh, there being none. Couple of questions. Uh, I haven't gotten to the oh. public yet, but go ahead. Oh no, this is Todd. This is Todd. Oh, okay, Todd. Um, I, I apologize. I had to leave the last meeting halfway through, uh, so I missed half the discussion. But um, can I understand the the logic um, in going from two sidewalks to one sidewalk to no sidewalk? I'm happy to respond to the chair. Go ahead. Uh, so we initially proposed one. It's an industrial, uh, you know, subdivision. There's no sidewalks on Washington Street. So if anyone was walking along a sidewalk in an industrial subdivision, there's no connectivity, you know, to Washington Street to go anywhere. Uh, at the last meeting, the board, those of you who did did opine, uh, did feel the same way. So. If ultimately you'd like a sidewalk, our stormwater uh, system accommodates for that amount of impervious area. Uh, but given the practic practicality of it, uh, the sentiment we got was that you'd be okay with no sidewalk in a two lot industrial subdivision. Okay, right. Adam, do we have do we have any idea of future plans by Mass DOT for Route 20? I know all of their planning documents that are coming out of Mass DOT central office, as well as their districts, uh, include requirements for complete streets, sidewalks, bike lanes, et cetera, as they redo all of their roadways, uh, except for major arterial highways. I'm not aware of anything specific with Auburn. Um, I know they've been reworking um, the Oxford Charlton End and the Shrewsbury Worcester End, but I'm not sure if they are complete streets or not. Uh, Heather from GPI, you know, is 
constantly works with DOT on, on their projects. So if, if she has any information, I would invite her to, to, to talk about the Complete Streets program and her experience maybe with this situation or you know similar situations. Is that okay, Mr. Chairman? Absolutely. Please proceed, Heather. For the record, I'm Heather Monica with GPI. Um, so we did, as part of our traffic study, that is one of the things that we do is we check with um, MassDOT. Obviously, this is a MassDOT roadway on whether or not there's any um, planned improvements in the area. There's a 10-year plan and things like that that we check. And at this time, there are no planned roadway improvements within the vicinity of the site um, for, for Route 20. Uh, but uh, you are correct. Uh, they do, when you're doing long quarters and things like that, um, there are very specific standards for complete streets, uh, shoulder widths, um, sidewalks, things like that. And if you um, deter from them at all, you need to provide a uh, design justification workbook um, uh, showing why, why you can't meet certain things that needs to be approved by the DOT. So there is a process to get things eliminated um, on an as-needed basis, project to project. Um, but again, it, it's everything is a project to project, whether you're talking about an intersection improvement or a corridor study or something like that. Uh, but they are completely into complete streets, bikes, heads, vehicles, everything. So. That, that was an accurate statement that um, that Todd had said. So to, just to follow up on that, um, since you don't get a second chance to build a roadway for the first time, um, since this is a private roadway and through the chair to Adam, uh, is there any opportunity should MassDOT come through and do Route 20 over with sidewalks and make it more walkable? to require that this roadway then in build out uh, sidewalks to make those pedestrian connections? Or is this essentially our only opportunity to do that? Uh, that's a good question. That's a real good question. <laughs> I don't have an answer for you. Um, I think that's something I'd have to talk to town council on to see if we can condition something like that. Um, I, I don't have an answer for you. Through the chair, um, I think you know. I, I hate to you know maybe drag out issues that don't need to be dragged out. If if the board you know feels as though that there should be a sidewalk, we're happy to put it back on. Um, if you you know the consensus is that you you don't see the need for a sidewalk for a two lot industrial subdivision, even if they were shared use paths or, or sidewalks along Route 20 in 20 years from now. You know, I still don't necessarily see the need, but ultimately it's the board's decision. I think if we could have some consensus, it might give us some, some direction, you know, to go forward. I Through the chair, I'd like to see the sidewalks. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else from the board? Yeah, it's Ronnie. I, 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 I just don't, I don't see the need for the sidewalk. I can't see the day when it might be that Route 20 is going to have sidewalks on it. And as uh, I don't know if it was Todd talked about the main arterial roads, I would say that Route 20 would have to be one, and I think it would be a lot more dangerous having a sidewalk on Route 20 than never having it, uh, with, the, with the speed at which the traffic travels on that road. It's just, it's, it's a dangerous, dangerous road. So, so uh, Mr. Chair, uh, through you, I would just say, you know, that uh, Route 20 is the exact type of corridor uh, planning that uh, Mass DOT is doing when they are looking at complete streets. When I talk about arterial, we're talking I-90, 95, um, those types of 128, those types of arterials. Uh, but they are looking at corridors such as Route 20 and adding in sidewalks and adding in bike lanes as part of their statewide complete streets policy. Um. Mr. O'Connell, how far in from Route 20 is the first driveway? The first driveway that comes off the subdivision road? 
Correct. It's uh, going to be about 1,200 feet. Oh, wow. And from that driveway to the next driveway? Next driveway would come off the end of the cul-de-sac at 1,485 feet. Okay. Well, Again, if, you know, if the board is split on this issue, we're happy to, I, I think, uh, you know, a compromise would be one sidewalk. You know, I don't think that, I think oh, I don't, the I don't, need for two is. I agree. I don't believe two are necessary. Uh, one. Yeah, this is Todd. I agree with one. Okay. Mr. O'Connor, would you have to make the bridge wider to have that single sidewalk? No, actually, we accommodated that. Um, in our in our initial design, and we maintained that uh, you know that that bridge width when we removed the sidewalk from the plan. So uh, it's, it's an easy add for us. Our stormwater calculations already account for the impervious area the sidewalk would add. Uh, so it's really just some lines on the plan. So if uh, unless anyone really objects, we just add one sidewalk back. And that would be on the right side going in. Yes. Over on the left side. It was on the right side going in. Going in and down the hill. Yes. All right. Um, I believe, and Adam, you can tell me if I'm wrong, if we do put the sidewalk on one side, you would have to start beyond the Route 20 uh, right-of-way, correct? You wouldn't be able to bring it out to Route 20. You'd have to start in off of Route 20 with the sidewalk. Otherwise, you need state permission to put the sidewalk out to Route 20, which doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I mean, if, if we did it, if we started from the right of way in to the, um, the development, then if the state plan down the road, as Todd mentioned, may be to spruce up the, the, the whole Route 20 and put a sidewalk in, they would bring their sidewalk in to meet the sidewalk at the edge of the right-of-way, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not sure where the edge of the right-of-way is, Steve, but it's, it's got to be a ways off the road. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a little ways off the road. You know, and obviously you're familiar with that, John, with that circumstance sometimes where it can be further off the traveled way than others. Um, but in, in this case, uh, and maybe Heather should speak to this because she does these sorts of things regularly, um, we could terminate the sidewalk with, uh, with an accessible curb ramp, you know, back out onto the, ro to the subdivision roadway before the state highway layout. And then if, uh, if a sidewalk were to come along Route 20 in the future, uh, you know, they could just go around the radius of the uh, roadway entrance and, and tie in. Uh, but Heather, do you have anything to add to that? No, I would agree with that. Um, it, I mean, if it makes sense to go into, I mean, we can take a look at it, but if it makes sense to go into the state highway layout, we can add it to our improvement plan um, for the other roadway improvements that we'll be doing out there. So it can easily be incorporated. But I would agree that um, a sidewalk to nowhere, as explained, no sidewalks on Route 20 today, that we should probably just keep it at the right of way. And then a DOT, if, if and when a DOT project comes through, they would they would bring it right up to the uh, to the right of way line. Correct, it just saves a little extra work. The state would take care of that portion down the road if they ever did that. Plus, you could almost get a free wheelchair ramp out of the end of it because you'd have to ramp it down. You just couldn't leave it a, a, as a blunt end. Uh, are there any more questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Todd. I just have one other question. I noticed in the plan uh, you have 14-foot ornamental lighting, um, but I didn't see a lighting plan. Um, did I just miss that? Uh, in terms no, you of where the not. lighting is, is proposed? Um, if it if it doesn't show up on the plan, we'll make sure it does on the next revision. Um, but our intentions are to meet your subdivision regulations uh, with re regards to street lighting. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else from the board may have a question? 
or concern? Um, being none, um, I have a couple of my own. Uh, under question three on page two of six, uh, when you clear, clean out the um, accumulated sediment from the temporary sediment basin, what becomes of the sediment removed? W where does it go? Uh, well, if it's clean, um, it could be used, it could, you know, it could be screened and, and blended with other materials for, you know, as, as fill, you know, clean fill, um, you know, depending on, you know, it's makeup um, that would be determined, but it's, you know, it's not hazardous. It's not, doesn't have to be handled like street sweepings or catch basin cleanings. Right. Uh, it would not be used as part of the basin reconstruction, that's for sure. Okay. Um, my next question is, are all the clearing activities completed? They are. They are. Okay, so if anyone's listening from Tuck Farm Road, I spent some time up there this afternoon. I can't see anything from either the cul-de-sac or the end of the first driveway off of Tuck Farm Road with the uh, three rows of um, condos. And there isn't any leaves out yet. I couldn't see anything. I hope that alleviates some people's problems or concerns. Um, I see you have a waiver here from the standard roadway cross section. It's been requested. Um, is there a reason why you want to do yeah, Clarify that. I'm sorry to interrupt. I can clarify that. Okay. Uh, anytime I make a practice of asking for a waiver, anytime there's any deviation from the standard cross section. So in this case, uh, you know, the, the deviations are, you know, we're either going to go from two sidewalks to one or two to none. Uh, we're also increasing the pavement width from 24 to 26. So uh, although those are relatively minor, uh, th those are the deviations. I just okay. like to be transparent about those sorts of things. Um. As far as the tree planting goes, I know the town's 40. Uh, Gray's recommended 60 to 80. I like to split the difference between 40 and 80, just make it 60. I just think it would look better. And it's only a couple of more trees. Okay. Um, Can I ask a question since we're gonna make that change? Uh, would, uh, would the board like to see those trees? You know, as they show up on the plan, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're not staggered. You know, they kind of get put in, in series, you know, two, two trees, two trees, two trees. Would you like to see some sort of staggering? So 60 foot spacing, but every 30 feet, you have one on the right, and then 30 feet on the left, and then 30 feet on the right. I think that would be fine. I didn't know if you had a preference. I'd, I don't. Just trying to think ahead of any last minute, you know, request that could come come along this process. It was a good question, Steve, and I, I think it would break it up better if you did that. Um, what is the span of the bridge off the top of your head, Steve? 26 feet. Would it be more um, practical to put in a double box culvert instead of a bridge? Because you got to put head walls on either side anyway, so. Yeah, we've done some cost analysis, my client has, um, and because they're equipped and capable of uh, construction, you know, bridge abutments and steel erection, um, and they've built a bridge with an 80-foot span in Uxbridge uh, with great success. You know, this, this, this is what you know they have preferred to do. Um, it was just an idea I had. Yeah. No, we're open to ideas. 
Um, I have no more questions. Are there any, is there anyone that has uh, come online to from the public that may have a question or concern? Being none, may I have a motion to continue this to our next um, planning board meeting? This is Todd, I'll make that motion. May I have a second? If people second. All those in favor? Nicholas Lynch? I guess Nick left. Ron Brooks? Aye. Steve Chambers? I'm all set. Aye. Todd Corain? Aye. One more time, Nicholas Lynch? No longer here. Aye, John Regan is an aye. We will uh, see you uh, people at the, the next um, planning board meeting. Thank you for your time tonight. Uh, Thank, you very very informative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do you want to take the um, release of the um, lots before uh, LH Cora goes? We have the uh, other business storm water by law by Corey. Yeah, do you, want, do you want to take care of the um, Eastland release of lots for us before we, we can? Well, if we still have them, we yeah. can do that. We can jump on okay. Yeah. Um, in other business tonight, under discussion, a request for release of Covenant, the reserve at Ashworth Hill subdivision. If Adam could give us a quick rundown what that actually means. Sure, through the chair, this is, was brought to my attention last week. This is kind of a clerical error on my part. Um, the lots were all released last June, but um, they, the decision was written up as a partial um, and not um, a complete release. So um, Eastland Partners is just looking for uh, another vote to rectify this and I'll write up a new decision. So it's a basically a clerical mistake on, on my part. So the intent was to release all the lots and yep. we only did a part? Correct. Um, does anyone on the board have any concerns regarding that cleanup of a clerical error? Anyone? Not here. Go ahead. Oh, I, I said I had no concerns. Oh, okay. Um, anyone from the public that may have concerns? Okay, all those in favor to make this correction and release the lots? Um, may, may I have a motion? Never make a motion, John. Yep. Make a I'll motion. make the motion, John. Okay, may I have a second? Steve, I'll second. All those in favor? Nicholas Lynch? Gone. Ron Brooks? Aye. Steve Chambers? Aye. Todd Corain? Aye. Aye, John Regan is, is an aye. It is a vote. Uh, moving on to other business. Uh, what is, uh, what is in concern with regards to the stormwater bylaw? So um, this is going to be on the town meeting, an update of the stormwater bylaw. Um, for some reason, I can't open it on my computer. Um, so the requirements by the state with that. Pretty, pretty much it's a requirement that this be updated by June 30th. Um, Eilish Corey, along with the stormwater committee, um, mainly it's been Eilish Corey that's been doing the update. Uh, Stormwater committees are meeting pretty regularly to go through all the updates. Uh, I'm sorry, Eilish, my PDF of your presentation is not opening. Um, That's okay. Do you want to try and make me the presenter and I can bring it up on my screen? Would that work yes, for you? Are you able to see 
Um, should, I, should I jump into it? Is that the... Jump right in. Okay. <laughs> all right, great. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, thank you all for, for having me here tonight. Um, I think this is the first time I've appeared to the planning board um, in person. Um, I started with the town at the Department of Public Works as the senior civil engineer um, last year, right before the pandemic hit. Um, so I've been slowly um, getting to know the town and to know everybody in it. Um, so it's, it's things like this that are, are great for both to, to show you what I'm doing and, and to get better acquainted uh, with all the different departments. Um, so I am going to be presenting to you tonight um, about what the town has been doing in terms of stormwater management, um, specifically to do with an existing bylaw that um, is a stormwater bylaw that's in the general bylaws. And this was put in place um, a few years ago, uh, but due to federal requirements that have been handed down to us from the EPA, um, we do have to make changes to it. Um, and like Adam had, had said um, right before the presentation, we have a June 30th deadline to do this. And if we do not, um, then EPA has made it very clear that they are going to be conducting audits to ensure compliance, and we could potentially be facing some, some very serious financial fines as a result. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of background um, as to why we're doing this, and then I'll go into um, some of the more specifics of, of how it's going to operate um, after uh, the changes are hopefully approved at, at the Springtown meeting. Um, so stormwater, <laughs> just to start at the very beginning, is, um, is really rain, um, but it, it can be things like snow melt and, and sleet as well. Um, so the town is concerned about it um, in, in terms of the pollution that it contributes to our local water body. When it hits the ground, it becomes runoff um, and picks up anything that's really been left on the ground. Um, so in places like Auburn, that can be pet waste that hasn't been picked up, um, natural things that just accumulate on roadways like oil and grease, um, or even like trash and debris. So. Um, the old way that um, we kind of dealt with this, and not just Auburn, but you know, the entire society that we live in, was to kind of just push it out of the way as quickly as possible. And uh, this worked for a little bit, um, but now we're having problems where pollutants have concentrated into our local water bodies to the point where they're impaired. Um, they're, they're having some serious environmental and public health consequences that we now have to deal with. So there has been a movement in recent years towards a, a more sustainable method of stormwater management, um, something that you see coming from the planning board all the time. Um, things like infiltration basins, rain gardens, fire retention, that sort of thing. And the result really is, is that it um, forces the stormwater to infiltrate before it comes in contact with pollutants, and it also prevents the spread of those pollutants. Um, excuse me. Uh, so, in support of this new method of stormwater management, um, the town was given something called an MS4 permit, and this permit is jointly administered by EPA at the federal level and that's the EP at the state level. Um, and although it's uh, jointly administered, um, EPA is really the, the leading partner in this, um, and, and you're going to see that um, as to why we, we do have to make changes to our bylaw. So um, the permit is essentially a stormwater permit, and it is given to municipalities based on the density of development from the last uh, census, which would have been in 2000, I think they're still working off of the 2010 until the 2020 results come back. So the municipalities that you see in that image right there that have some sort of color in them are all municipalities that have the same permit we do. Um, and the important thing to remember right now is that this permit requires us to have um, stormwater regulations that are currently above what the state requires. And again, that has to do with EPA being the main writers of this permit. So the main areas of concern that EPA is looking for us to change have to do with um, construction uh, like stormwater management during construction, 
as well as after construction, so uh, long-term maintenance of best management practices, as well as how the installed treatment devices are addressing phosphorus. And the phosphorus is um, specific to Auburn because we have a, um, a, we have impairments for that particular pollutant in some of our water bodies that causes excessive vegetation growth. So the town does have an existing stormwater bylaw, um, as I mentioned before, and this was put in place uh, due to a previous iteration of the MS4 permit that came out in 2003. Um, however, these changes are being driven to the revised permit um, that was issued in 2018. So the original bylaw authorizes um, a land disturbance permit as well as a stormwater committee. And the stormwater committee has the authority to uh, put regulations in place, stormwater regulations. And the reason that there's both is that the bylaw provides the authority and a, a basic skeleton of what's required. And then the regulations fill in all the, the nitty gritty details um, that are subject to change. So although this bylaw was put in place, um, I haven't actually been able to find the exact year it was done, um, but I think it, it was quite a few years ago. Um, it was never actually enforced by the town, and that's because regulations were, were never developed. Um, so the Stormwater Committee, uh, which you see the members are shown on the right hand there, um, it includes uh, many different members from uh, different departments in town, um, as well as uh, Mike Garland from the Conservation Commission. He's, he's new to it, but we're, we're definitely looking for his input. Um, have been working to develop the revisions to the bylaw that are required, and also to develop a set of regulations that can be put into place once the bylaw has been approved. So again, the reason for changing the bylaw um, is that it currently doesn't meet the requirements of these federal design standards that have been given to us. And we do have a deadline of June 30th of this year in order to make them. Um, the other reason to update the bylaw is that it was written um, a while ago. So there have been some changes to um, really the way that stormwater is viewed since it was written. So in order to match the regulations that the Stormwater Committee has been drafting, we would need to make updates to the bylaw as well. So overall, the changes that um, we're looking to make to the bylaw aren't gonna change the original intent, which is to put this land disturbance permit in place um, and to allow the town to um, have better oversight of stormwater management, again, both during construction and after construction. Um, however, the changes kind of fall into these four different categories. Um, if when, when, the, when the articles do come out to the public, you'll be able to see them more in detail. Um, but the, the gist of it is to bring it up to modern standards um, by updating some key definitions as well as removing any duplicate or contradictory language um, that we've identified as um, either confusing to somebody who's looking to apply to a land disturbance permit or um, confusing for the town to administer the permit. Um, we're also gonna be removing any technical references or procedural language into the regulations. And that was at the advice of a consultant um, that we were able to bring on as part of our membership in a regional stormwater group. And the reason for that is that the stormwater committee is able to update their regulations regularly without having to go to spring town, or excuse me, to any town meeting. And so that will allow us to keep up with the pace of technology, um, as well as if there are any more regulations that change in the future, um, so say if the state decides to update there, we'll, we'll be able to do it um, in a much smoother process than what we're going through now. Uh, the last is to update the, the thresholds for when a permit is needed. And um, again, as part of our membership in this regional stormwater group, um, an audit was performed of all the member communities and they found that Auburn had some of the strictest um, thresholds for, for needing this permit. Um, so we're kind of scaling those back a little bit. So it puts us um, where our neighbors are, and but we think that it's not gonna compromise our ability to ensure better water quality. 
So those thresholds for requiring a permit um, are on the right side of the screen here. And you'll see that they're a little different um, than what the Conservation Commission currently requires um, for when a stormwater report needs to be submitted, as well as what the planning board, um, when a planning board requires um, a stormwater report to be submitted. And that is where the coordination between the DPW, um, conservation, and the planning board is really going to start to come into play once this permit um, begins to be administered. I think we're going to have to work very closely, um, so you'll be hopefully seeing my face a lot more. Um, but having Adam on the stormwater committee is very valuable as well, um, because we are going to be requiring submittals for this permit that are also going to be going to planning and conservation um, that really aren't any different. So things like um, as built need to be submitted to everybody. Um, o and M are operations and maintenance plans for things like detention basins, infiltration basins. Really the only difference is that the design standards are going to be higher for this land disturbance permit, or I should say higher or equal to um, what planning and conservation already requires. Um, the other is that there is going to be an adjustment period for applicants who are, are coming to the town and, and looking to develop. Um, so we want to minimize the amount of submittals and reviews that they have to be doing in the future. Um, so figuring out the details of how that's going to work is um, definitely something that we're going to be working on in, in the next couple months. So um, this is just kind of repeating what I said before. So uh, once the bylaw um, hopefully gets voted in at Springtown meeting, the Stormwater Committee will meet um, to finalize and vote in uh, the regulations. And the Department of Public Works will be the lead department in administering um, and enforcing this permit. And we are currently working on developing uh, educational documents um, and like even things like the permit application itself, which will be available on the town's website for uh, developers who are looking to apply to the permit. And we are also looking into the possibility of developing a, a, a new permit tracking system that would hopefully be able to tie uh, all the different permits that um, an applicant would need from all the different boards and departments so that they're all in one place. Um, so again, they're not having to submit their stormwater report to three different people in town. Hopefully they can just submit it once and um, then the appropriate people will be able to see it from there. Uh, so in summary, uh, uh, we have a federal requirement um, to update our regulations to incorporate stricter standards for stormwater design. And these need to be incorporated uh, by June 30th, or we, we could potentially be looking at some very serious financial fines. Um, and DPW will be the lead department um, for administering the land disturbance permit that will be authorized by the bylaw. But we're gonna be working very closely um, with all the different town departments and boards to ensure that it's as smooth of a permit process as possible. Um, and I'd, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have on this right now, um, but I've also provided my contact information um, if, you, if you or any members of the public would like to reach out separately with any other questions. So thank you. Thank you for an excellent presentation. Is there anyone from the uh, public that has any questions or concerns regarding the Auburn Stormwater Management? Is there anyone on the board that has any concerns or questions uh, about the stormwater management update? I, I, Ron? John, I'd just like to say that it was, that it was an excellent presentation. It was, was excellent. Uh, being no Thank you. Agreed. Being no questions, I, I just have one. Well, maybe it's like a part, sure. maybe part B. I know it's getting late, but. So the EPA, DEP, they're all worried about phosphorus and limiting phosphorus going into our fresh bodies of water because of the vegetation growth. I understand that. And I can understand 
uh, during new development and maybe some of the old developments doing something to limit the phosphorus. I don't know how that's going to be done in stormwater. It's not like it's going to a treatment plant because the treatment plant can't afford to take stormwater. They do from Worcester because they have a combined sewer outlet system, huge, but Auburn doesn't that I know of. So it just uh, if you can give me a quick rundown, how do you check for the phosphorus or reduce the phosphorus that's you know, coming out of our drain system, say going into Eddie Pond? Sure, it's a great point. And um, what you're saying about wastewater treatment plants needing to treat for phosphorus is um, definitely a, a very ongoing issue um, that's been coming up in the news a lot because it is so expensive um, to upgrade these plants to treat phosphorus like that. Um, the great thing is, is that things like detention basins and infiltration basins and rain gardens actually provide a, a natural source of phosphorus treatment because the vegetation itself um, that's planted there, um, you know, usually it's grass, but um, in, in things like bioretention basin, you, you do see a higher level of landscaping. Um, those plants actually suck the phosphorus up and they use it as a, a natural form of fertilizer for their own growth. And so the, uh, both the state and EPA have um, separate uh, calculators that you can use to determine um, a percent of phosphorus removal based on your surface area and the type of vegetation that's being used. Um, so this is something that, uh, at least at the, at the state level from the stormwater handbook, this is something that developers would be familiar with um, already and know how to use. Um, even if it has to be pointed out to them, they probably don't use it a lot, um, but it is there. It's been there for quite some time. And um, it, it's not something that we have to figure out um, empirically on our end. We just have to look at their calculations and make sure that they're being performed correctly. So to put it um, in my terms. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. doing it, no, I mean, just for me, for my purposes, we're doing it the green way, not like a treatment plant that has to use all kinds of chemicals. So when this is all done, the treatment's actually free, right? Yes, and even even something as um, simple as a dry well that allows for a direct infiltration into the ground, um, when when stormwater is discharged into soil, a lot of times um, the soil part will actually grab onto the phosphorus as it goes through. Um, so it's not a lot. Um, sometimes, but it's enough that you can get credit for it, and it's definitely better than allowing the stormwater to run um, directly into a water body without going through any sort of filtration. And this is why the Natural filtration. The green room with a septic tank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does anybody else have any other questions? Great presentation, great answers to my dumb questions. Um, no. <laughs> Is there any other questions that we may have for this young lady? Uh, being, d being none, thank you again for an excellent presentation and I'm sure we'll see more of you in the future. Um, moving on to uh, discussion uh, or decisions or any unforeseen, nothing by the chair, anything unforeseen from the town planner? Two quick updates. Um, I may have mentioned it. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it in the past, but I'll mention it again. Um, currently, there's a survey, interactive survey, um, about a conceptual redesign of Garda Park um, that's on, on the town website. Uh, that survey is open until at least May 1st. Uh, if you haven't taken it already, I, I encourage you to, to take it. It's only about 10 questions. It kind of gives some options of one may, maybe we can do with Garda Park in the future. Uh, so that's one. The second is the MVP. I think I mentioned this at every meeting, um, but there's been a scheduled community event. It's going to be this Saturday at the high school. Um, it's the Leesville Pond Water Quality Workshop. So instead of a workshop, it's a workshop. We're going to have 10 or 12 signs with a couple of um, groups in attendance um, spread out over um, 100 feet. It'll be set up by the baseball field. Um, this is part of the MVP grant. 
um, encourage you to to attend. It, it probably won't take you very long to take a quick walk through. Everything is um, following the, the COVID protocols as required. Um, Board of Health's been informed of everything, so don't, well, we've got it um, in hand for, for that aspect. Um, this is gonna be somebody, I believe, from the Worcester Pond, Lakes and Ponds Department. I believe CMRPC might be in attendance and um, Eilish Corey is gonna be there to talk about stormwater. Um, if you want more information, feel free to contact me. There's also information posted on the town's Facebook and the town's website. That's this Saturday. Thank you, Adam. Um, our next meeting is uh, April 27th, 2021. May I have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Hold on. Oh, you got one more? Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry, Steve. Uh, Steve O'Connell from, from, from Turning Point Engineering. Uh, Adam, was uh, that covenant release able to be discussed tonight? Yes. yes. And they've. Okay, did I, I missed it. Yes. Yep. You're all set. All right, that's all. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? No, no, Nick no, made the motion. motion. Right, Nick made the motion. May I have a second? Steve, I'll second. Uh, all those in favor? Todd Corain. Aye. Steve Chambers. Aye. Ron Brooks. Aye. Nicholas Lynch. Aye. Aye, John Regan is an aye. It is a vote. We'll see you on the 27th. Thank you. Thank you.